Hi, good afternoon. Now looking at the alt altitude home assignment. Uh, apologies, my, it's very windy in my garage today, so it's, if you hear somebody like whistling, it's not me, it's the garage door. Uh, anyway, altitude hold assignment, and this is the block diagram of a typical altitude hold control system. And let's have a look at some of the parts to it. We've got an actuator here, which moves the elevator. We've got a short period oscillation transfer function in there, that's the SPO transfer function, with the output from the transfer function being the pitch rate. We then integrate the pitch rate to get pitch angle. We then have another transfer function with between pitch angle and altitude, called the altitude transfer function. And then we have a three separate feedback control loops. We, have a, we measure the pitch rate and feed that back through a gain called KQ. We measure the theta, feed that back through a gain called K theta. And these, this part here forms the control system called a pitch damper. And then the outer loop on altitude is controlled through a gain KH. So what we'll be doing, we'll be working out this transfer function. We'll be working out that transfer function We'll then be working out these two gains and eventually that gain. And then we'll do a simulation of this as well to look at the transient response of the altitude to a step input here. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is get some transfer functions in here and here and then design the pitch damper. So to get this transfer function, we start off with some state space equations of the longitudinal dynamics and um, we've got some of those for a 747 model and these comprise of a 4x4 four four set of state space equations. Now all this is done in greater detail in the video coming up. This is like an overview of some of the key points. So before you start the video you've got a clue as to the direction of travel. So we start off then looking, investigating these four by four state space equations, and these got four variables in forward speed, vertical speed, pitch rate, and pitch angle. And we'll develop these, and from these, depending, we've, we've got a fixed A, fixed B, as we change the C, we can get different transfer functions. So if we pick up the theta by putting in 0, 0, 0, 1 as the C matrix in here, we can pick up the transfer function for the SPO transfer function. And that will be our first little foray into state space. All this is gonna, this clearly this calculation here is quite complicated. So all the calculations are done in MATLAB. The program itself, the assignment has got a PowerPoint. Inside the PowerPoint, as it goes through, there are bits of MATLAB code which I've made so you can just copy them and paste them into MATLAB to run. So if you copy and paste the bits of code from the PowerPoint into MATLAB, they will give you the first set of answers. And they'll give you a process of working out all the different designs. So the first stage is to work out the transfer function for the SPO which we can do from these four by four state space equations. We can then go about designing the k, q and k theta from this part here. And this gives us the design of a pitch damper. And we're going to do that using root loci, technically using the angle and magnitude criteria, but we're going to do it, this, it is using the angle and magnitude criteria, but through a trial and error method in MATLAB. So we just keep on plotting root loci, until we, and we change these numbers until we get our design. And that's the first part of the design, which is the pitch damper. We can then, having got kq and k theta, we can simplify all this part here, because we know all the numbers in that, to a single block. Our next job is to work out the altitude transfer function. Now, if we think about the altitude, h, then if we think of h dot, it's the vertical velocity, isn't it? Now, if the plane's flying along at some angle of attack theta with some velocity u naught, the there's a component of vertical speed and a component of, of horizontal speed. So horizontal speed and vertical speed. Now, the vertical speed is u naught sine theta. 
which we could simplify if theta is small just to u naught theta. We've also got a vertical component anyway in the state called w, which is the vertical speed of the aircraft. But in general, w is me measured in this model, w is negative down or positive down. So if this is positive up and we want h to be measured in that direction, we could get a simple equation for altitude change. h dot is u naught theta minus w. So u naught theta is the, the component going up this way, assuming we have positive theta. And then we've got minus w because w is measured in the negative direction. So this gives us an extra equation now, which we can add to these to form a 5 by 5. So we can extend now our 4 by 4 to a 5 by 5 with h as the new state. And in this now, h dot is equal to minus w plus u naught theta. That's this equation here. And so this gives us a 5 by 5 state space equation. All those will fill up as noughts. We'll get an extra note in there. The red, the blue, the red A is the same as that, and that's the same as that. So we could go now from a 4 by 4 to a 5 by 5. So this is a 5 by 5 calculation now. And if we choose C as a 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, it will pick up the height. If we choose a 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, it will pick up the theta. So we could use this model now to work out the transfer function for the height and another one to work out the transfer function for the theta. And what we want, so we've got a transfer function now between there and there. We've also got a transfer function between there and there, that's the g. So we've got two transfer functions now between elevator and h, elevator and h, but this is between theta and this is the transfer, this transfer function here now is what goes in here. Now, so we know now that this is equal to this times this because they're equivalent. The there and there is the same as between there and there. So therefore, gh is given by g theta times g theta h. So if we rearrange this now by putting that underneath there, we can get this transfer function, simply this divided by this. So if we work out the two transfer functions, gh and g theta, divide this into this, we'll get that. So we're going to do that calculation as well, again all in MATLAB. And that'll give us this transfer function here. Once we've got that transfer function, and we've got this one as well, we can then plot the root low side of the system between there and there, and then that'll allow us to choose the gain kh. And once we've got the gain kh, the whole thing's done. And I suppose the last stage then would be to build this block diagram up in Simulink and simulate it and get a plot of the change in altitude against time. And so that is the bare bones of this design. Um, it's now probably a three quarter of an hour video going through it step by step, stage by stage, with detailed MATLAB code, and then hopefully sufficient explanation for you to be able to reproduce all of these results. Now, the final twist, I suppose, is obviously I've given you all the answers in my presentation. So in your assignment, we're going to make slight, I'm going to make slight changes to the A matrix. So you, I've done it for a given A matrix and you've got all the results. So in your particular case, though, I'm going to change the A matrix slightly. So then the answers won't be exactly the same. You've got to redo the process then that's been done here but with a slightly different A matrix, but going to the same design specifications. Um, so that's what we're going to have a go at doing. So hope you enjoy this. And um, we'll now move on to the PowerPoint video. Right, this is the altitude hold assignment. And it's in two parts. Part one is the design of a pitch damper. And then we use the pitch damper design to go on to do an altitude hold autopilot. And it's based on some 747 state space equations um, from a book by Aitken and Reed, which is uh, quite a famous book in flight dynamics. So let's have a look at the overall problem. Um, 
The system comprises of two, two control systems in cascade. So we've got this part here where we've got a transfer function. This is a transfer function for the short period oscillation inside here. And the output from this box is the pitch rate. Then we integrate pitch rate to get pitch angle. And so this is attitude control. So the first control system we design is this one around here and it's called a pitch damper. Then we have to get a relationship between theta, the attitude, and the altitude h. So we have to extend then some equations, state space equations to derive this transfer function. Then when we've got this transfer function and we've got this part designed, we can simplify this part here to a single block and then use root loci methods on this forward loop transfer function to get at the gain kh here. So that comprises of the design. So we're looking for a kq, which is a pitch rate feedback, k theta, which is an attitude feedback, and a altitude feedback as well to design the overall system. So just after three gains, kq, k theta, and kh, and that will then define our altitude hold autopilot. So just coming back to the central part of it now, which is the pitch damper. This is the design that we're going to look at first. And as I say, this is the short period oscillation dynamics. This is a little actuator in here. And this is the pitch rate. This is pitch angle. And we're feeding these back through two gains, K1 and K2 to design our pitch damper and it's that part then that forms this central part in here which you then can go out to design that part there. Now the actual dynamics, the flight dynamics uh, for the aircraft is the longitudinal dynamics and in this model we've split the aircraft off into longitudinal lateral dynamics so we use the longitudinal dynamic model in which the main variables are u, which is forward speed, w, which is um, vertical speed with w down as positive, q, the pitch rate, and theta, the pitch angle. And we can obtain three equations of motion for these. Forward motion, which is a u dot equation, so u dot, if u is velocity, u dot is like acceleration. A w dot, which is the acceleration in the vertical domain. U is the acceleration in the horizontal domain. And then also we can do a torque is equal to I theta double dot equation. So Q dot will be theta double dot. So this is a torque equation applied to the aircraft in a pitching mode. So these are three equations of motion, which and from these we can try to derive transfer functions to describe the different motions of the aircraft to movements in the elevator. So we're looking at elevator movements relative to the dynamics of the aircraft. Now, this is now the, if we took those equations, these become the state space equations. Now we're gonna derive these in the lecture, or in one lecture anyway, but we're not gonna do that today. So we'll just assume that this has been done correctly. So we can go from those state space equations here to these, or these not state space equations, from these three linear F equals MA type equations, rewrite these in matrix form, and we get this equation here. Now this is a fourth order system, and so it'll have a, if we look at the transfer functions associated with this, they will have a fourth order root associated with them. And these fourth order roots can then be factorized into two second order roots. And one of the roots is called the short period oscillation and the other one, the fugoid mode. So this model now contains both the SPO and the fugoid mode. And it represents now the aircraft flight dynamics. So here we have some state space equations for a 747 flying at about 236 meters per second, um, probably about 15,000 feet. And 
the variables now are u. These are the A matrix. This is the B matrix, and we can have different C matrices. So if we choose C as 0, 0, 1, 0, it'll pick up the third variable. So that gives the transfer function between elevator and pitch rate. If we choose it as 0, 0, 0, 1, it'll pick up this bottom number here, which gives us the transfer function between elevator and pitch angle. So um, this code now, we can use this to generate transfer functions because you can go from, from state space to transfer functions. And this is some nice MATLAB code now that does that for us. So it says the numerator and denominator of a transfer function is given by SS to TF. This is the state space to transfer functions. There's A, B, C, and D. Now I've had to make the B a negative sign because the elevator movement induced positive elevator movement tends to induce negative W, negative Q, negative theta into the system. So that doesn't hold with feedback control thinking. So we just put a minus sign in there to essentially make the control loops have the right signs. So the first thing, this sign of code, this converts the state space equations into a transfer function with a numerator and denominator. This then forms cis2 as the transfer function, which you get if you use that numerator and denominator. And ZPK prints out the transfer function in factorized form, poles and zeros. And we've also put an extra line in here, just a bit of interest. It's then plotted the root loci of the system. That's the elevator to pitch angle under closed loop control. Plots the root loci just so we can see what it looks like. So, right, so here we have the state space equations. And what we can do now is to copy this directly into MATLAB. Now just be careful, sometimes when it copies, it'll introduce the odd little stray character in. So if it doesn't work first time, just look for a stray character. But if we do a copy on this, like that, then got MATLAB now open up a new script file and paste it into there. And then when we've got that in there, it's got all the code in there now. If we now run this, I'm just going to call it untitled 2 for a moment. And here we have now two things. We've got the root low side plot, which we can, if we do file or edit, copy figure, copy figure allow us to um, paste that now into a word file if we wanted to but also here we've got the transfer function now here so notice this has got the this is the slow mode so it's the viewgoid mode and this is the spo mode down here and here's some other bits of the transfer function as well so that's given us now the transfer function here of that system, which worked out this thing CSI minus A to the minus 1B, that's what MATLAB's done for us. Given this transfer function, as you say, this is the fugoid mode, here's the SPO mode. And if we'd put that system under closed loop control like this, this would have been the root low side plot that we got. Now, one of the things about the SPO and fugoid is this, there's two modes here. Now, if we look at the transient response of the system to say an impulse change in elevator, you can see this first part is the SPO part, which is quite quick. It's got a period of about two or three seconds, maybe four seconds. Whereas the fugoid mode, it's got a period of about at least a hundred seconds. So this is very slow. This is quite quick. Whilst the amplitude of the fugoid mode is about 0.3. This amplitude is about 0.9, so much faster, bigger amplitude, the SPO, than the fugoid. So the fugoid mode is a motion that you can hardly feel. It's a bit like when you go up in a lift. It's quite a slow motion. and You don't even notice that you're really going anywhere. Whereas this is quite a fast motion. This would be like if somebody braked rapidly in a car. You'd feel this one, but this one's like being in a lift. 
you would hardly feel it was going on. So the view guide mode isn't so interesting for us at the moment. So we'd better to try and simplify our transfer function. So it's just got the short period mode in and we can lose the view guide mode. So if this is the original transfer function now. We could say now as an approximation, that number there is very, very small, so you can disregard it. That's very small and that's very small. So those numbers could disappear. The s would then cancel with one of those s squares to leave us with this simplified transfer function. So this is the complete transfer function. This is a simplification. And I've plotted here now the root loci of this simplified system. So you can see these parts here are identical. This part here is almost identical. And it's this little part here, which is representing the fugoid dynamics, which don't really affect the main part of the root loci plot. So it's indicating now this could act as a better model now for us, rather than having all these extra bits in. So we'll then adopt this as our SPO model. Now, one of the things about the short period oscillation is, um, since the 1950s, they've been looking at performances of aircraft and looking at typical satisfactory values for damping ratio and natural frequency of that second order mode. Remember, the SPO can be modeled by a second order system, and we're interested in the natural frequency and damping ratio of the SPO mode. And it's been found that if you've got a damping ratio of about 0.6, natural frequency of 3 radians per second, um, then the aircraft is said to behave in a satisfactory manner in terms of its dynamic handling. So a good target for um, the damping ratio natural frequency of the SPO is about 3 radians per second for the frequency and damping of about 0.6. Now the problem is that the short period dynamics have the real aircraft are nowhere near these numbers. So what we, they're probably down here somewhere. So we need to use feedback to move them from here into the satisfactory zone. And that's what we tackle in the design of the pitch damper. We move the damping ratio natural frequency of the open loop short period dynamics into a satisfactory region up here by changing the damping ratio and change in the natural frequency using feedback. So let's look at how we could do that. Here's our simplified SPO model, and here's a little actuator that we've included as well. This is a typical sort of time constant for an actuator, about 0.25 of a second. So it's quite fast. Um, and the time constant is inversely proportional to the pole. So it's quite a fast actuator. Um, and here's the SPO model here. Here's the SPO mode here. If we worked out the natural frequency damping ratio of this, it's nowhere near 3. And that, that term there is omega n squared. So you can see that omega n is around 1, slightly less than 1. So it's nowhere near 3. Damping is nowhere near it as well. So, but we could look now at plotting the root low side of this system to see as we change the gain, can we get the right value for damping ratio and natural frequency? So this is the problem we're looking at. Proportional control on the SPO mode. And here's some code now that will plot the root loci for this. So let's have a look at it. The first three lines are setting up this little transfer function here. The four is that four. The one four is the one four there. And that's setting up the transfer function one. That's sys one. Then the next one is setting up this line here, setting up that number there and that zero. And this line down here, setting up the SPO mode. So that's the SPO mode, and that's setting up the second transfer function. Then the third one is a 1 over S. So this is 1, and this is 1, 0, because like S plus 0 there. So that's setting up the third one, that's SIS3. If we multiply SIS1 by SIS2 by SIS3, we get the effect of that times that times that, and then just plot the root loci. And I've also printed out what the close, what the transfer function looks like just to check it's okay and sometimes with the root loci you need to adjust the scales of the root loci otherwise it gets too big or too small so this is x max x min y min y max you can change those numbers to scale your root loci 
And again, if we take this piece of code like this, copy it, we can take this into MATLAB now. So I reckon when you go to MATLAB, just do a new, new script and paste it in. It's quite quick, this, isn't it? Then if you click on the run now and just save it as wherever you want to, then here's the transfer function and here's the root loci plot. Now, if we put our mouse on here and drag the mouse along, we can see the effect of change in the system gain. And we can look, look for a damping natural frequency of three, damping ratio of 0.5 as being acceptable values. So you can see on this, no matter what we do, at this point here it starts to go unstable. So this would be unacceptable over here. So although this is getting towards three, the system's unstable, so it'd be no good. So if we come back into the stable zone, Damping is really low at about 0.1 frequency. So you can see from this, with proportional control, we can't achieve the desired performance. So that means proportional control alone isn't going to do the trick. If we want to copy this now, we could do edit, copy figure, and we could paste that into some document to have a record of what we've done. Now, if we go back to this, so Here's the thing, and this is the root log site. And we can't get our damping of 0.6 and micro 3. Just no matter what we do, we can't get it. So we have to move on now to a PD controller. Now, um, for Simulink purposes, if you did want to do this as Simulink, you have to have at least a num the same number of poles and zeros in a transfer function. So we have to sort of slightly modify the transfer function. It's the same transfer function, but in a form suitable for Simulink. So this is like the four of S plus four there. There's the SPO transfer function, there's the one of S. And the SK1, S plus K2, that part's the controller. So there's our controller, K1, S plus K2. And now we've got to choose K1 and K2 so as we can get our damping ratio of three, sorry, natural frequency of three and damping ratio of 0.6. Now we could do this using the angle and magnitude criteria um, but we could also use MATLAB to just guess, play about with K2 until we get the right answer. So if we use that method in this particular case, here's now the code. Um, so this code now is similar to the code we had before. This time we've added in a K2. Now this is the answer here. So we'll change in a second so this sets up the four one and the kd this is setting up this um, four and the s plus k2 um that should be k2 there shouldn't it k2 um and this is the one four of the denominator so just going back to it that's the one four down there and that's uh, that's defined as sys1. Then we set up, this is setting up the SPO mode. So that's the 0.156, there's the zero, there's the SPO mode there. So that's setting up this part here times the 1.156. So all that is set up as sys2. This part here is set up as sys1. And then finally, the one over s is set up here. Multiply the three together, plot the root low side, see what it looks like. Now, let's just choose this as 0.8 shall we, for the start, knowing that the answer is 0.48. So let's say we didn't know what the answer was. So we could take this code now. So we could copy this code. The copy again. Copy that. Then go back to MATLAB. Go into new script and paste it in. It's easy peasy this, isn't it? There's your code. Now, K2 is 0.8. Run the code and save this and title four. And here's a root log sign. Now we could look along here now to see if we can get omega n as three damping as 0.6. You can see it's getting it's better than it was before. This is, as this comes up to 0.6, now this is two. So it's a lot better than it was under proportional control, but we need this to be three, not two. So we need to make the number different. So let's go down to 0.6, shall we? Run it again. So that's how at point six. So this time we go down to point six. 
There we go, and that's gone up to 2.84, so it's, it's a bit better, isn't it, than it was before. So we could go down to, say, 0.4 now, because of trial and error in this. So 0.4 now, go along here to 3. So it's quite close now, isn't it? This is 3.08, and this is 0.5, or almost 0.6, so that one's getting close. If we though go to 0.48, and run that one. We can get this at three. If I can get my mouse to work properly. Can't do small movements with my mouse, unfortunately. Try again. Too much. Ooh, it's hard, isn't it? Just have to drag, drag, drag it around until it gets there. And we can see, oh, it's not really good, done. A bit down. Need a better mouse. Pressure's on now. Let's see if we can get it. It's a bit more. Oh, too much. And we can see now that's 0.6, and this is quite close to 3. So we're going to go for a gain. Um, I can't increment this prop. Unfortunately, I've got a way of nudging it. Just needs a bit of a nudge. And this will just go a little bit not bigger. So that'll go to 3. Let's go to 2.04 in there. And that'll be our design now for our PD controller. Again, we could edit, copy that to figure to get this graph out. So um, here's our final design now. This is three. This is very close to 0.6 and the gain somewhere about two, 2.04, I've chosen it. So in this particular case, for my design, K2 is 0.48, K1 is 2.04, and the, that achieves then in the closed loop, the SPO mode, having a natural frequency of 3 and a damping of 0.6. Now, when we actually come to implement the controller, we tend not to implement it in this format here, mainly because this has got a differential term in the S is a differential term and it will tend to pick up noise on pitch angle. So we're better off we can measure pitch rate to give us the differential term. So in this particular case, we've looked at the controller. It's K1S plus K2 V minus theta. This is what the controller looked like. And if we look at the feedback term, it's got a minus K1S theta and a minus K1 K2 times theta. So if you just multiply this out, and just look at the feedback terms involved in theta. They're the feedback terms. But S times theta is Q. So we could replace S theta with Q to give us that signal there. And then this would be K1 times K2. So this is an alternative implementation now of the same controller, but it's less susceptible to noise. You can measure a special sensor to measure pitch rate. So I have a low signal to noise ratio to coming down that way and that way. This will give you a more stable flight control system. So this is how we tend to implement it in practice. So um, here's our final design now. And one thing we could do is we could simplify now this block diagram to a single block between here and here. And if it's worked, then we'd expect the closed loop system to have a natural frequency of 3 and a damping ratio of 0.6. So here's some code now. This is the first part here. This is setting up the SPO dynamics. This is setting up the dynamics of the, um, the 4 LRS plus 1. And then we're multiplying this by this. We're then doing feedback with the gain, 2.04, remember going back to here, K1 was 2.04, remember, and K2 was 0.48, so it's going to be 2.04 there, that's 2.04, so this part sim block simplifies this part here to a single block, that's CIS4, and that multiply CIS4 by this one here, which is CIS5, and then put those in cascade with 2.04 and 0.48, and then put that under feedback of unity gain there. And that gives us, then we do a multiply the poles and zero. So what this code is doing, 
So it's simplifying this down to a single block. And when we get the answer for this, we can see this is oh, quite close to nine. And this is quite close to 3.6. That's that's omega n squared, and this is two zeta omega n. So these controllers now have given us effectively moved the SPO dynamics to have a natural frequency of three and a damping ratio of 0.6. These numbers, if they'd been spot on, that would have been exactly nine, and that would have been exactly 3.6. So I've got some little bugs in, but it's quite small. I'm not to worry about too much. So again, if we take this code here and just do a copy and go back into MATLAB and do a new M file, better to do a new M file on new script every time. Just paste it in there and then run that. It's entitled five now. And here's my transfer function coming out here. And here's my SPO mode moved by the feedback to have the right characteristics. Natural frequency of three, damping of 0.6. Remember now that's the one that fits in with our design requirement here. Damping of 0.6, natural frequency of three. And we've achieved that by doing some feedback control. And we've now completed the first stage of our design, which is the pitch damper. So our pitch damper is now designed and we've got all the parameters for that. So we can now move on to the altitude hold. Right, so we're now on to the altitude hold part of the design. In this in the previous part, we designed the pitch damper. Remember that was K1 there. Now we've moved the, this the K theta into the feedback loop. We've done away with the forward loop part of it. So this parameter is going to be K1 times K2, and that's going to be K1. So this part now is our pitch damper. But now we need a transfer function between theta and this variable here, which is H. So we need to work out this transfer function here. So this is a fairly sort of complicated transfer function. And we need to now try and derive this transfer function between theta, the attitude, and h, the altitude. So we're gonna have a go at doing that first. Then once you've done that, once you've worked out these numbers, we can then do a root low side design on this part here. And the way we're gonna do that is gonna block simplify this down to a single block and then plot the root low side of that whole system. So this exercise splits down into two subparts really. One is working out what this part here is, simplifying this down to a single block, and then plotting the root loci of the overall system to get kh, and there's like three parts to it if you like. Get this, simplify this, root loci to get that. So there's three things to do. So let's have a look at this. So these are our original light dynamics, and it doesn't involve h, the altitude. Remember, W was the vertical velocity, so you could argue that H, um, H dot is W, isn't it? Because if W is the vertical height, vertical velocity, then H is the altitude, so therefore H dot is in fact W, or the vertical speed anyway, not maybe W, but the vertical speed of the aircraft. So looking at the some equations, some simple equations now. Imagine that we've got a the h dot term now will be given by u naught theta. So u naught is the forward speed, theta is the angle, the flight angle. So if it's going up theta that way, so if theta is going positive, it's going to be going up, and it'll have some component going up, and it'll be u naught sine theta. But for small thetas, we can argue that sine theta and theta are the same. This is u naught theta, so if it's going upwards like this, the h dot will gain on the sine theta, a, a u naught theta term. But you've also got the aircraft motion w, and because we're defining, say, u naught theta as being positive that way, our w is defined as positive in this direction downwards. So therefore, we can get a simple equation of h dot is u naught theta minus w. So this is a nice simple equation that relates theta w u naught the forward speed of the aircraft to the rate of change of altitude like a linear differential equation that describes that 
So here's the equation now, h dot is u naught theta minus w. So what we're going to do now is take our original 4 by 4 equations and make them 5 by 5 by adding in now an extra state to the model h. So this bottom line is h. So that is still u, that is w, that is q, that is theta. This bottom line now is h. And the first term is h dot, because on this side of the state space, it's u dot, w dot, q dot, theta dot. So it'll be h dot. But we know now that h dot is given by minus w plus u naught theta. So that's going to be minus w, because the second state is w, plus u naught, that's u naught, times theta. So that picks up the fourth variable. So by adding in minus 1, 235.9 in there, that's putting in the, all these here a zero, because there's no h in those original equations, so they become zero. And we put an extra zero in the B matrix. So the 4 by 4 becomes a 5 by 5. And if we wanted theta, we'd put a naught in there. If we wanted altitude, though, we'd move the naught or the one from there to there, because this would pick up altitude. This one would pick up theta, because the fourth state is theta and the fifth state is altitude. So we've got a model now that incorporates this original model grown a little bit from a 4 by 4 to a 5 by 5 and depending on what C matrix we choose now we can either get a transfer function for theta or a transfer function for altitude and depending on which one we choose we can then use this code to can enter this these state space equations as a system. We can then do a state uh, state space to transfer function to get a numerator and denominator. And we can then define that as a transfer function and do a ZPK on the transfer function to actually work out what the transfer function in the system is. So if we chose this as our C, we would still get our transfer function for attitude. If we chose this transfer function though, we get our transfer function for altitude. So if we take this code now and copy this code here, like that. So in this particular case, we've chosen C as the altitude transfer function. So if we put that into MATLAB, paste that in, and now just watch it. Sometimes it puts some little symbols in in the copy, which will mess it up. If it doesn't, it'll be okay. Just, just clean this up. You might need just to clean it up slightly because the copy isn't perfect. Then run that. It's untitled six now. And here now is the transfer function for the altitude. So you can see, here's the SPO mode. Here's the fugoid mode. And so here's some extra terms now for the transfer function. So this is a transfer function now between elevator and altitude. So we'll just remember that one for a second. So that's our transfer function between elevator and altitude. And if we go back now to this code here and change now the C. So if we put a one in here and a naught in there, this and run it again, this will now give us the transfer function for theta. So we'll have two transfer functions. One a transfer function for altitude between elevator and one a transfer function between elevator and theta. So if I run the code again, I'll get a slightly different transfer function. So this is a different transfer function. Now it's, no, it's still got the SPO mode and the fugoid mode in, but these parts here now are a bit different. There's an S cancelling with an S there, notice, but it's still got this like, there's the zero of your, and there's the 1.1596, and there's a zero associated with the SPO mode. So we're going to use these two transfer functions now to figure out the transfer function between theta and h. Um, so going back now to our code here. So um, here's our transfer function if we choose the theta, here's our theta transfer function, which we could approximate down to this one. This is what we did 
or less B4. But now it's got this extra state in, but it gives us the same transfer function. If we now choose this C matrix to pick up the last variable altitude by putting one in here, we get a slightly different transfer function now, which is this one. It's got extra terms in here. There's a significantly different poles and zeros in here. Um, and I've dropped the negative sign just to keep the calculations in line. Now, what we know is that we've got a transfer function. If we remove now the fugoid mode from both, um, just to keep things simple, we've got a transfer function within delta E, change in elevator and height, which is given by this one here. This is the transfer function here, but with the fugoid mode removed. So that term would disappear. Those terms would disappear. The S would cancel with that one there. And so that would give us this transfer function here. This is the simplified version. So this is our simplified version, which is this one here. We've also got a transfer function between delta E and theta, which is, the, again, we're going for the simplified version. So that's this one here. So we've worked out now this one and this one. So if we know the transfer function between there and there, we know transfer function between there and there. We can then work out with the transfer function between here and here, it's got to be the same as the transfer function between there and there. So if you like this here is equal to this times this. So if I take this one here and divide it into this one here, so just take this underneath, I can get this one here. So if I take these that term there, down there, take that term there, up there, then I'll get this term here. So simple manipulation now allows us to reorder this. And then when we reorder this, it comes out as this term here. So I've got this term here, if you like, by moving that underneath there, moving that up there, and then this just comes out. I don't know this at the start. I just know that this is equal to this times this. I know this, I know this, so I can therefore work out that. And that gives me then this part here, which is the transfer function between theta and h. Right, so here we have the block diagram now of the complete altitude hold system. And the first thing I do is take this part here and simplify this down to a single block. So I'm going to do that by putting N1 as 1.15, that's that part there, then the 1.4 to get in that part there. Now that's this one. I'm going to put this zero in there and the SPO mode in here. That's going to go in as sys2 and multiply sys1 by sys2 to get those two together. Then I'm going to do the feedback around this way, which is the feedback with the 2.04, that number there. So that one there, and that simplified this part here. And that one is then called sys4. I'm going to put this transfer function in as sys5 and multiply those two together to get sys6. So this whole thing now here is sys6 and then put a feedback around this loop here so that's the feedback here and then that'll give me sys7 so this code now will simplify this whole block here down to a single thing so if i take this code click on here and just do a copy copy go into matlab and do new script, paste it in and run that. And type 11 and here we have the transfer function. So this is the transfer function now that's going to be replaced by all that. So that's been replaced now with this part here. Then I've got to multiply that by these terms here now. So I'll keep the code for this. Multiply, add in this, this and this, these two transfer functions, extra ones, multiply the whole thing together, and then I can plot the root loss line. So I can do that by, this is the first bit of code I had before, just did this block diagram simplification. Then the next bit of code, this one now puts in the next bit of transfer functions. That's the, my, the, um, two transfer, let's have a look at those. So I've got, this one here to put in and then that one 
So there's the first, um, there's the 1.364, 1.364, and I need the 0.289, then I've got the, that's putting that one in, then I've got the 4.7 and the 1.4, that's the numerator, 1.407, sorry, that's the 1.407 in there of the S, and the S is 1, 0, and then I'm multiplying those together, and then getting out the root loci. And so if I take this code now, copy that, and again put this one now into a new script file, and then run this one, and tile 12, and now get the root loci plot. Now, this root loci sort of plot is quite interesting. The only snag with it is what we want to do is find out what's going on in this zone right down here. So this is a, a non-minimum phase root loci. And uh, what we've got to do is see what's going on down there to find out at what value of gain it goes unstable. So therefore, I'm going to have to do is change the axes on my root loci. So if I go to this code here now go down here and put in some axes on my root loci. So now I put axis, open round brackets, open square brackets, minimum x is going to be minus 0.2, maximum x is 0.1, um, minimum y minus 0.4, maximum y 0.4. Close the square brackets and close round brackets. If I run this again now, I get a more detailed root loci. So this is going unstable here, with a gain of about 0.003, but I need to get a damping ratio of 0.5. So if I come down here now, until I get a damping ratio of about 0.5, got too far. So damping ratio of 0.5 with a gain of 0.304. So this is giving me now my gain, suitable gain for my KH. So I'm going for a gain of 0 0.304 in there. So if I go back now to my back to my simulation now. Um, there's my root loci. There's my more detailed root loci. About 3 0 4, that's my gain. And so now I know that the gain in there now is going to be 0 0.3 0 4. And I can simulate then this whole system to see what the transit response looks like. And if I put 0.304 in there. This is the transient response I then get from the system. You can see it's, it's changing altitude in about 40 seconds. It's not a fast response, but it's reasonably fast. And this is then the transient response of your closed loop altitude whole block diagram. And we could, if we go back to this, go into home and boot up Simulink. It's going to take a few seconds, this unfortunately. And then I'm going to have to already loaded in this model, so I'm just hoping this is the right model. We can hopefully run the simulation. So these simulation blocks, you've not got those to cut and paste. You'll have to build these up yourself. Uh, Simulink has a bad habit of when it gets going. It takes a few seconds to load. Or even more than a few seconds, so... We could be waiting here a few minutes even. Come on, get going. Mine's a reasonably fast processor as well. I've got an i7 here and it's still slow. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Here we go. And here's the block diagram. So here's all the different bits. And there's 2.04, 2.04 times 0.48. Here's my gain, 0.304. It's my proportional controller. And here's my overall design. So if I click now on the run button, I run it for 100 seconds. It runs the simulation and it crashes. Uh, and the reason for that is it's got the wrong path to the file. Uh, so I do say save, save as uh, invalid directory. That's not very handy for us, is it? Um, I don't think I can get 
Anyway, I can do this now to do that and to do a copy and then go on to a uh, open or even new new and paste it in this is what's happened is I've got a pen drive and I've not stored it on the pen drive so sometimes MATLAB can get a bit upset with it with that but now this has got around it I run it for 100 seconds up there click on here and it should now run there it goes and then if we click on here we'll get the transient response so there's a transient response so you can see it's got something like it's taking it's tracking after about 35 seconds steps coming after a second it's got something like about a 15% overshoot and then leveling off so we could have it's not a bad design uh, fairly acceptable for a flight control system if we wanted to save this now we can do file and copy to clipboard and then if we paste that then into our word document we'll have a copy of the transit response so here now is our is our final designer there's the actuator there's the SPO mode there's the integrator that's pitch rate that's pitch angle here's the transfer function now for the between attitude and altitude which we've worked out and then simplified all oh, there's the gains the two gains we've got simplified this part here using block diagram reduction multiplied by the transfer function between theta and h plotted the root loci got this gain here run the close loop simulation and seen that our overall performance is acceptable um, and that's the, the design done so hopefully you followed that and you can then proceed to write this up as the assignment so on that note i shall finish this part off